The technique of continuous diaphragm walls consists of excavating the soil with a cutting element, usually a hydraulically or mechanically driven bivalve scoop, and then proceeding to introduce a reinforcing frame, which is concreted in place by direct injection of concrete using a temporary lateral casing in order to ensure continuity in the constructed wall. As in any type of work, safety measures must be applied throughout the process, from the loading of the machinery, auxiliary equipment and accessories, right through to its final dismantling and removal from the worksite. The machinery should be carried in a special gondola and controlled by an operator situated at a safe distance, avoiding unnecessary risks at all times. When necessary, materials should be guided with holding ropes during unloading in order to prevent swaying, and they should be stowed in a suitable, risk-free location. Operators must never stand underneath suspended loads or within the range of movement of such loads. Platforms must be stable, strong, level and free of obstacles, both at ground level and above the ground. They must be sufficiently wide and suitable for the characteristics of the equipment that is to be used. These conditions must be maintained throughout the whole of the construction process. Separate areas will be set up for different work-related activities, such as equipment assembly, manufacture and storage of slurry, and assembly and storage of frames, as well as the site workshops. Special attention must be given to ensuring that the walkways and access paths for auxiliary personnel are free and unobstructed at all times. The same safety measures are applicable in the site workshops, even though they are located away from the actual construction site. The corresponding Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, must be worn in the workshops and worker materials must always be kept in an orderly fashion. Worker access paths from the site huts to the work platform must be at least 60 centimeters wide and free of obstacles. They should comprise temporary stairs or ramps where necessary to cover differences in height. The access routes for the machinery and supply trucks must be clearly separated from the paths used by the construction team. Guide walls are a subsidiary element in building diaphragm walls, which serve to mark the layout of the wall and guide the excavation tools. They should be flagged with markers, and any work areas containing slopes or cavities where there is a risk of falls should be duly signalled. Even when the actual work operations have not yet started, all personnel involved must use basic safety equipment – helmet, work clothing, safety boots and gloves. The manufacturer's assembly instructions must be followed to the letter when setting up the various equipment units. Throughout the construction process, it is important to avoid any distractions which might cause risks. Once all of the equipment elements have been assembled and set up, a check shall be made to ensure that they have been assembled correctly and that there are no tools or other objects which might fall off when the equipment is hoisted. When the machinery is moved during work operations, the assistant must stay within the operator's range of vision at all times. The assistant should check that the caterpillar tracks do not move onto any surfaces over which they cannot roll properly, as this risks destabilizing the machine. Once the equipment has been positioned alongside the trench that is to be dug, the turning area of the machine is indicated with markers in order to prevent workers or machinery not involved in the operation from entering into this area. At the same time, temporary fences or marker posts are installed one meter from the edge of the trench. If the excavated soil is unloaded into a truck, the driver must leave the cabin during the filling operation and remain outside the turning radius of the machinery. If there is any type of stoppage during the excavation process, then the trench should be duly protected with Tramex metal grid platforms to prevent falls. The site should be cleaned as, and when necessary, to remove residual slurry or other materials which might cause workers to slip or fall. 
during checks to verify the depth and verticality of the trench, or any other activities which involve the risk of a fall from height, the operator in question must wear a safety harness duly attached to a lifeline or fixed point. The reinforcing frames will be checked throughout its length to ensure that there are no loose bars or rings that might fall off during the hoisting and positioning operations. It is also necessary to confirm that the welding joints are of suitable strength and correctly located at the key points of the frames. All coupling elements such as cables, chains, slings and shackles must be in perfect condition and should be discarded immediately upon any sign of deterioration. The frame should be hoisted slowly and carefully and the fastenings and the weld resistance should be checked. No one is allowed within the range of movement of the frame during the manoeuvres which will be guided by a qualified operator. To prevent swaying of the frame during its conveyance to the trench, the frame should be guided by using holding ropes attached approximately one meter from the base of the frame. The Tramex boards should be removed before positioning the frame over the trench. During its introduction into the trench until it becomes seated in position, the frame must be handled by using the holding ropes only and never by hand. If they have not already been put in place during assembly, separators will be introduced successively as the frame is lowered. If the frame ends up at a height above the work platform, then plastic caps should be placed on the ends of the vertical bars. On the other hand, if it comes below the platform, then the trench should be covered again with Tramex boards. When installing the joints, the same recommendations that apply to the frames should be followed. It should be noted that the two crane winches will be used for hoisting and introducing these elements. Special cages should be used for assembling and storing the concreting tubes and the cages should have a platform with railings that allow the operator to assemble the tube safely. If the container does not have a railed platform of this kind, then the operator must wear a harness to ensure his safety. A support yoke should be used when mounting the tubes in the trench. When the concrete supply lorry arrives at the site, an operator will guide it to the correct position for pouring concrete into the trench, being sure to direct the maneuvers from a position that is clearly visible to the lorry driver. The operator must take particular care not to be struck or trapped by the pouring chute when deploying the chute and placing it over the funnel. During the pouring operation, the operator should use safety goggles to protect against splashes of liquid concrete. Anti-splash goggles must also be worn during the process of removing the slurry by pump. The pumps must be set up by expert electrical installers using suitable protection to avoid the risk of electrical shock. Once the concrete has started to set, the joints will be removed by means of a hydraulic jack. In order to prevent any possibility of the crane toppling over, it will only be used while the joints can still move freely in the concrete. The disassembly and withdrawal of equipment from the site should basically follow the rules stated for the unloading and assembly of machinery, auxiliary equipment and accessories. Observe safety rules throughout the process, from the loading of the equipment until its disassembly and withdrawal from the site. Use a safety harness whenever working near an open trench or in any other situation where there is a risk of falling from height. Use holding ropes to guide the frames. Cover and fence off any holes where there is a risk of falling. Stay within the machine operator's range of vision. Never remain within the operating range of the machinery. Never stand below suspended loads.